Hello. <laughs> I'm going to show you guys one of my new books that I got. I actually got it a few weeks ago, but haven't had a good opportunity to make a video yet, so I just decided to uh, make it tonight. But as you can see, it's a Norton facsimile of the first folio of Shakespeare, which was published in 1623 got the whole thing going so and uh, so yeah I'll just show you as you can see gives a little information here that you can skip. Just kind of gives a little information on the first folio, how it was printed, all this stuff, which is fascinating, but it's not what I wanted to do with this video. So uh, this here is an interesting poem. It's by Ben Johnson to the reader. If you want to read it, you can pause it. It's worth reading. And then the first page here, published according to the true original copies. <laughs> And there's the, the goofball himself, 1623 in London. And uh, shows the dedications, more dedications. And then this here is basically trying to convince people to buy this book. From the most able to him that can but spell, there you are numbered. We had rather you were weighed, especially when the fate of all books depends upon your capacities, and not of your heads alone, but of your purses. <laughs> well, it is now public, and you will stand for the privileges we know, to read and censure. Do so, but buy it first. <laughs> so, he's trying to convince people to, <laughs> to buy the book. So, and this here is really precious to the memory of my beloved the author mr william shakespeare and what he hath left us i'm pretty sure yeah this is ben johnson again so it gives a whole poem showing his love basically for william shakespeare and then there's another dedication and then this, and you know, the interesting thing, if, if anyone watching hasn't really looked at too many of these older books with the old typography, you know, some of you guys will know this already, but like, you know, the, the U looked like a V and, um, then you have an S here, several, uh, the S it's called a long S. It was, uh, a hangover from German typography. That was a, you know, a custom in German typography, and since all the printing came from Germany, it just kind of stuck with us for a little while. And then same thing with the uh, Vs, they look like Us. So that's the word several. And then histories and tragedies contained in this volume. But yeah, and then it shows all the plays that were included in the this one here. And they're fascinating to read in this original version. Let me show you a couple. So here's The Tempest. This is what it looks like. It looks like this the whole way through. I just love it so much. I love this old spelling. I mean, I can't get over it. The spelling is just so nice to read compared to modernized spelling that's all, you know, it's just all fucked up, you know? It looks ridiculous. But. <laughs> oh, kiss me through the hole of this vile wall. I kiss the wall's hole, not your lips at all. <laughs> I mean, 
with the with the original spelling it's just so much better and I know I'm making a kind of a big deal out of something that may seem trivial but I do think it really matters seeing this original spelling how they looked at it back then because this is how they saw it you know this is how not necessarily the typeface now the typeface is interesting and it's fun but that's not necessarily how they wrote but the spelling is how they wrote and I think you can't ignore that Shakespeare was spelling things this way and if you modernize the spelling you'll be missing a really a huge part of how Shakespeare wrote his plays and um, yeah so there's Midsummer Night's Dream, The Taming of the Shrew give you a little more of a idea of what it looks like here but yeah it's just so nice I love it so much and um, I was actually lucky enough to find this edition published by Yale of Shakespeare's sonnets and um, it's the only edition I've been able to find that has a facsimile in it also so Oh, it actually is on one of my favorite poems. So, yeah, Sonnet 71. So if you see here, this is the printed facsimile from the 1609 quarto of his sonnets, Shakespeare's sonnets, that he was actually alive to um, publish. Uh, of course, he lived till 1616. So he was not alive for the folio. But, yeah, I mean... So look at this here, like just kind of gather that really quick there and then compare it to this, which is a modernization. Isn't something just lost? Just by seeing it all in this sort of normal language that we always look at. And maybe that's the, uh, maybe this is more similar to someone of Shakespeare's time reading this. Maybe to them it was like, oh yeah, whatever, it's no big deal. But we're not of Shakespeare's time, so I think it's really beneficial reading it like this. And I'll just go ahead and read it. This is Sonnet 71. It's one of my favorites. No longer mourn for me when I am dead. Then you shall hear the surly, sullen bell give warning to the world that I am fled from this vile world with vilest worms to dwell. Nay, if you read this line, remember not the hand that writ it, for I love you so that I in your sweet thoughts would be forgot, if thinking on me then should make you woe. Oh, if I say you look upon this verse, when I perhaps compounded am with clay, do not so much as my poor name rehearse, but let your love even with my life decay. Least the wise world should look into your moan and mock you with me after I am gone. So, there's the modernization. So, but yeah, it's so nice. All the poems have the facsimile facing the modern typography and spelling. And also this, uh, this editor, Stephen Booth, it's actually an excellent commentary too. It's hard to come by a really good commentary, but this guy really knew how to do it. Um, so I'd recommend this if anyone wants a really nice edition of Shakespeare's sonnets. Um, this one is excellent. And uh, let's see, I also have a, here, let me, let me grab it really quick. So there's another edition of Shakespeare's complete poems that is really good. Um, this here, this Rutledge. A Longman's Annotated, so basically it has, um, so it has Venus and Adonis here, but here's the sonnet, so it does give it in modern spelling and typeface, but it pretty much maintains the uh, punctuation, luckily. And then it gives really excellent uh, annotations, like any words that may have changed meaning, um, 
you'll notice it references Samuel Daniel, his Delia sonnet sequence. So if you want to really learn Shakespeare's sonnets thoroughly, these long men's editions, these annotated long men's editions are really good. I actually got um, turned on to them by, I'm in a Edmund Spencer class right now and we're reading Edmund Spencer's Fairy Queen in the long men edition and it's, it's actually excellent. The, d the notes do go overboard very frequently, so you pretty much just ignore them unless you think you need help from it. But um, Another edition of a facsimile I was able to find recently, which I'm very grateful for, because it was also very cheap, is uh, Philip Sidney's Astrophil and Stella from 1591. And... Um, you know, that was after Philip Sidney had died. He died in 1586. And then, so it says here, to the end of which are added sundry other rare sonnets of diverse noble men and gentlemen. So basically they have Philip Sidney's Astrophil and Stella sonnets here, and then they just included, I think, George Gascone and um, Samuel Daniel. Just kind of threw in some sonnets. But, uh... Yeah, so, yeah, and if you're familiar, um, these are love sonnets that Philip Sidney wrote, and uh, the first one is really, really excellent. If you want to pause it here, you can read it, but... Fool said my muse to me, look in thy heart and write the last line but yeah if you notice the the character names astrophil you know star lover and then stella is uh latin for star so it's quite interesting as you can see the, the really excellent beautiful typeface and spelling yeah, so luckily, like I said, this one was really cheap because uh, no one had bought it for years at the bookstore that I went to. And then another interesting thing I have that I've had for a while now is uh, this anthology of Elizabethan plays written by Shakespeare's friends, colleagues, rivals, and successors. And it includes plays from all these chaps. Unfortunately, it's all modernized spelling. Um, you know, what can you do? Can't have everything. <laughs> it's published in 1933, actually. But yeah, these are the ones that it has. If you can find this and you really like Elizabethan stuff, this one's an absolutely perfect anthology. Because, you know, most anthologies, they'd probably give like an act or two of these, but they actually give the whole play. And it's, you know, all the best plays, you know, of course, apart from Shakespeare. But, um, yeah, it's really neat. You can find it for pretty reasonable prices, too. And then uh, the last thing from my Elizabethan foray that I've been in recently... And, you know, I've made a video in the past on it, but got back into it. Um, I had actually read George Chapman's poetry, his early poetry before. And I really enjoyed it. And, you know, some people think that George Chapman is the rival poet for Shakespeare in the, in the sonnets. But... Of course, George Chapman is most famous by far for his translations of Homer through John Keats. That's pretty much the way most people know his name upon looking in Chapman's Homer. And, uh, yeah, I've recently gotten them. You can find these really cheap through, uh, like, used copies. Princeton put out some really nice editions. They're separate, unfortunately, so you do have to buy two, but they're excellent. They're absolutely perfect. So uh, it does not maintain the original typeface, 
but it does keep absolutely the original spelling. The second book, you know, the Deathless Muses undertake, maintains a pitch above all mortal powers. You know, see, it has uh, the original spelling all the way through. Here's the famous catalog of all these people, which James Joyce parodies in Ulysses, the Cyclops, uh, episode 12. And then, of course, the Odyssey. It's actually a really nice painting. I never looked at that painting very close. And that, of course, is the same thing. Fourth book. Really nice spelling. That maintains the parentheses that are usually taken out and replaced with commas. So, yeah. And actually, I've noticed that these older translations are actually much easier to read. Um, you know, modern translations really read like, like kind of ridiculous prose, usually, you know, like uh, the Fagel's translations of Homer. You might as well just read like a summary of a prose edition, because that's really all it ends up being, you know, it's not really very artistic, of course, in my opinion, but um, if you have a chance and you haven't read much of Homer yet, you might as well just start with Chapman and just stay with it, unless you really are having a hard time working through the Elizabethan turns of phrase. But if you can manage it and you enjoy it, I would definitely say just do Chapman. And these are perfect editions. You can find other editions that are pretty cheap because, you know, of course, it's an old translation from around 1600. But yeah, these are the, really the ones you want. And you can find them for between 5 to $10 used in nice editions. So, yeah. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me about these. I've been looking at these books for quite a while. Um, this one is, of course, a new one for me, but it's so fascinating. And then, of course, I have my, my other big folio Arno Schmidt's Bottom's Dream, so, yep, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, and uh, if you guys have read these before, or really have any other good recommendations for other facsimile editions, let me know, especially if they're cheap, so, yep, death is a gang boss. <laughs>